or myself. Senator Tillis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, um, I have a great affinity for Tennessee because that's where a lot of my family lives. I went to high school in North Carolina, tried to get it admitted to uh, the union as North Carolina, but we had to cede that territory. So I got a big connection to Tennessee. Um, and I, I just want everybody to recognize why we're having this discussion right now, because we nuked the blue slip on circuit judges. And now we've got two Republican uh, members who absolutely do not like this nominee. I'm not even going to get into the argument. I'm sympathetic to a lot of what Senator Blackburn said, but we are here because we have hyper, uh, we have politicized circuit court nominations. And I don't believe the White House has treated Senator Blackburn and Senator Haggerty, Haggerty with the respect they deserve. Of course, we have a Democrat president. Of course, we just should assume it's going to be a Democrat nominee. But honestly, is this the only one the White House can come up with? And the reason why I'm a little bit sympathetic to it is I had the White House try to tell me they were going to jam me on a circuit court nominee for the Fourth Circuit. They made the mistake of being definitive about how they were going to require to dictate the process until I told them I walked across the aisle and I got Democrats to commit to me that they would not confirm their nominee, that they were going to try to shove down my throat. I've tried to keep that private. But I'm trying to explain to my colleagues, folks, if you want to work on a bipartisan basis, do it when it's hard. Go back and tell me, if you want to be bipartisan, do it when it's hard. Go back to the White House and say, how on earth can you have two members from Tennessee objecting to this? Now, this member is going to get out of this committee. Next year, we may have a different president, and we may have a president who's not currently in office, and that president may choose to shove down the throats members in your circuits later on. Remember this moment. You can still get angry, but remember at this moment in time when you cast this vote, you're guilty of the same behavior you're going to accuse some of these folks being guilty of a year from now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, I, I yield to my more senior senator. I was just going to speak from the uh, seat on this committee occupied by Senator Feinstein because as I sit in this chair, I remember her sitting here and describing her fury that not only was a circuit judge being shoved down her throat because of the lack of a blue slip rule, but she didn't even believe that the nominee was from California. So this problem goes back to a determination made by Republicans that blue slips would not be honored for circuit nominees. I'm more than happy to consider trying to undo that and figure out a way to go forward, but a lot of us got burned hard by that rules change and the disrespect to us on this side as senators that was shown in the aftermath of that rules change. Sir Whitehouse, I agree, but can we all agree that that fuse got lit when, when Senator Reid nuked the, uh, the filibuster for Supreme Court nominees? No, I think the blue slip is a completely different thing. Oh, okay. Mr. Senator Booker? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I uh, understand and actually feel the anger and the fury of uh, Senator Tillis, and I think it's justified, and I, I hear Senator Blackburn, and I don't need to hearken to a, a member, God rest her soul. This happened to me under the Trump administration. A Third Circuit judge was shoved down our throat that we didn't even have a chance to meet with or engage with, and we thought we were negotiating in good faith for a large picture that included a district court judges, but then we were told that our opinions uh, didn't matter. And so I'm not looking at the providence of how we got here. This is situations where people feel justified injuries on both sides. I, I just suggest to members who feel the same passion as I do, and as I think uh, Senator Tillis does, that we could sit here and curse the darkness or point fingers at who caused it. But I'm happy to meet with anybody that wants to try to figure out a way out of this mess because I think the, what, the, what my colleagues are pointing out on the other side of the dais is absolutely right. This is, this is uh, wrong, and I believe we should get back to where we were before. Senator Lee. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I wanted to echo uh, my concerns to those who have spoken already with regard to their concerns with this judge. I, 
I want to raise a related matter, a matter that came up at his confirmation hearing that I asked him about in the hearing um, and didn't really get satisfactory answers. So I, I asked him more specifically and more clearly, I thought. And the con questions considered uh, uh, for the record. Um, one of those questions, um, question 37, I asked him the following. Knowing that Ms. Taylor Fondren had been accused of intentionally withholding exculpatory evidence from the defendant and making false representations to the court, did you have any conversation with her about those allegations? Were the two separate investigations into her conduct a factor in your decision to elevate her to serve as your first assistant? Remember, when someone uh, serves as a, a U.S. attorney, uh, the, the single most important and impactful hiring decision that person must make is to decide who's going to be the first assistant. The first assistant steps in in the absence of a U.S. attorney and um, really does a substantial uh, job uh, in running the office. So it would not be an insignificant thing uh, to uh, uh, appoint someone who had multiple complaints of um, uh, uh, violating Brady, uh, you know, withholding exculpatory evidence from uh, counsel to the defense during a criminal trial. It would be an unusual thing to put in a first assistant who would have multiple complaints unresolved over that and not at least talk about it. Um, his response was, as far as I can tell, utterly information free. Uh, it contained words, the words referred sort of uh, to the subject matter at hand, but were in no way, shape, or form responsive to my question. Instead, he says, Ms. Fondren is a native of Mem Memphis who has worked in public service with the U.S. Department of Justice for her entire career. She began her career as presidential management fellow with the Drug Enforcement Administration. It goes on, most of its travel log. I uh, fast forward toward the end. And the next paragraph, at the time I appointed Ms. Fondren to be the first assistant U.S. attorney in October 2022, I understood that the matter that ultimately led to the 2023 D.C. Court of Appeals decision in her case was still being litigated. I, it's not responsive to the question either. Um, in response to questions I asked, uh, including questions um, similar to those that Senator Blackburn discussed a moment ago, and those that uh, 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 those other questions that I asked related to um, uh, Q for number 37 in my list of questions submitted to him, uh, I found him to be at best non-cooperative as a witness. Uh, I, I also uh, found some of his answers to be not entirely forthcoming or at least responsive to what we were asking. Uh, that is concerning to me, in addition to all the other reasons uh, uh, that have been stated. I intend to vote now. Thank you, Senator Lee. I just want the members to re realize uh, one or two things. One is I have worked with Senator Graham in a bipartisan way to preserve the blue slip for district court judges. There has been pressure on me and others to change that. Uh, some from friends and some from those who are not friends. But I still believe it is a valuable tool for uh, the appointment of district court judges. And I thank the Republicans on this uh, side, particularly, and others in, in the chamber for working on a bipartisan basis to make the blue slip work under a, a president of a different political party. If we are going to do anything in blue slips on circuit court judges, I think there's one premise. We should do it prospectively not knowing the outcome of an election that may change the presidency and may not. That is a fair way to approach it. If, there, if there's any member of the committee who wants to start an active conversation along those lines, I'd be glad to join it. Mr. Chair, I, I want to be clear. I, I thank you for that because I think you have been good on that. The, the only point is, folks, this is an opportunity to say the White House needs to do its homework you don't have to have Senator Blackburn and Senator Haggerty having raving, rave reviews over it, but you could argue that the level of their emotion right now justifies another look at this nominee. And I just apologize in advance, colleagues, next year. If we're in the majority and there is a Republican in the White House after you are so frustrated with the circuit nomination that you're almost likely going to have confirmed, remember this moment. Being bipartisan when it's hard is what I'm looking for. Not judging this individual, 
but missing this opportunity right now, and I want to be technically correct, uh, that Senator Reid started something that, that, that Leader uh, McConnell finished on judicial nominations. We all know that, but they're intrinsically linked. This is a moment for next year, if the tables are turned, to remind me, Tom, you remember when I voted against the nominee because this member was not treated with respect on judiciary? then you can count me in to vote against the circuit nominee if you're treated the same way. But if you go down this path and you say, well, let's get together and sort it out, no, it's not about that. It's about a decision you're about to make. And if you make this decision, somebody who's tried to develop a reputation for working you all and voting on about as many nominees out of here as Lindsey Graham, maybe even more, including a district judge last week uh, for the state of Illinois, just remember this moment because you won't be able to have the moral high ground to stand on to say I should support opposing that nominee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman.